Hey, it's Jason Smith. Finding it harder to perform at your best as you age? Fight back with M Drive, the daily supplement for driven men who refuse to let age beat them. M Drive supports healthy testosterone levels and boosts energy to help you regain your edge. Visit MDriveForMen.com, that's MDriveForMen.com, for 20% off your first order with promo code SMITH. It's my last name, Smith. There's free shipping and a 60 day guarantee. Don't let age beat you. Visit MDriveForMen.com. You know the final score. Now listen to the NFL podcast that tells you why it happened. Do they have a skill or trait that is going to allow them to survive? Dan Orlovsky, Scott Pioli, and me, Bob Wischusen. We're tape heads going inside the coaching tape and giving fans the answers. Regardless of what the hierarchy is, folks need to be servants to the head coach. Listen to tape heads on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm Mike Yam. And I'm Aditi Kinkabala. We love football so much, we figured let's start a podcast and call it NFL Explained, where we just answer all the crazy questions we get about football all the time. There are a ton of those questions, Aditi. We can go through team names, like how the Buffalo Bills got their name, or who even came up with the Sky Camp, because that is actually a really cool idea. <laughs> Answers to questions like that and more every Thursday. Come join us for the NFL Explained podcast. You can find it on the iHeartRadio app or on Apple Podcasts, basically wherever you find your podcasts. Thanks for listening to the Best of the Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon podcast. Be sure to catch us live every weeknight from 10 p.m. to 2 a.m. Eastern, 7 to 11 p.m. Pacific on Fox Sports Radio. Find your local station for the Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon at foxsportsradio.com or stream us live every night on the iHeartRadio app by searching FSR. This is the best of the Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon on Fox Sports Radio. Hey, greetings. Welcome in. It is a big Friday night here on Fox Sports Radio. To correct the big voice guy, no, this is not Jason Smith. He's off fighting dementors at an undisclosed location in the greater Los Angeles area. No, Mike Harmon alongside my guy, Dan Byer. You hear him weekdays here on Fox Sports Radio on the Doug Gottlieb Show. Uh, He and I get together a couple times a week to do the I Want Your Flex podcast. Week 2 preview is up and rolling. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, wherever you get the audio. And then you hear him on the weekends. Sunday, breaking down games alongside George Reister. That's a lot of a lot of promotion to jump into things, but you know what? That's what you got to do. You got to sell, sell, sell. At hey. Dan Byer on Fox is where you find him. How you doing, brother? I appreciate every every bit of selling that you're doing. And listen, I would love to be coy and be humble and say, "Oh, please, Mike." No, I will take all of it. So please, yes, if you wanted to go two more minutes, it's always like when Bob Barker came out on The Price is Right, at some point you kind of got to tell the studio audience to like to sit down and shut up because you got to get on with the show. I would have stood there for two more minutes to let him applaud and whoop it up. So I will take every second of it, Mike. See, having uh, attended uh, tapings of The Price is Right back in the Bob Barker era, I mean, it, w- it was the best because they-, they were a well-run machine. You had like 42 minutes of content. They didn't tape for longer than 45 unless a machine broke. Really? And that yeah. included the extra two. Like, it was like timed so beautifully. It was a machine, Dan. I kid you not. The way they would move the the different gaming apparatus uh, apparatuses in for, uh-huh. for the next uh, event and people down into the front row and, and everything. It's like it, it was a machine. I got to tell you, that was um, – that was operational efficiency at its finest. Were you ever called up to contestants row? No, no. Told unfortunately. to come on down. No, it didn't happen. No, we didn't do that. But you know, I was really trying to take one of the curtains because it was still done in the seventies decor. Sure. When he was there. Like <laughs> yeah. they never changed out the weird brown curtains or whatever. Yeah. Uh, I, I was trying to get away with at least one of the prices right logos. Uh, but man, they had security all over the place because by the time I saw it, it was near. Uh, to where he was finishing his run. Uh, so they were making sure nobody was walking out of there with anything. And now with uh, they're celebrating their 50th year. The new episodes actually started this week. And with Drew Carey there, you could tell it's a noticeably different feel, especially with the colors. You mentioned the old, the old decor that it used to be. What's great is because my son, who's going to turn five months next week, recognizes colors. And so, like, we'll have Nick Jr. on and have all the cartoons on What's great is that he also watches The Price is Right with me because 
the colors are all the same. Like they're bright blue colors and there's green. And, 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 and so he is locked in. So you got to give the prices right credit for that, at least changing it up and making it a little fresh. There you go. Prices right, coloration, and obviously your wall of mini helmets. Great teaching tools uh, for your son <laughs> as you get rolling. It's funny. I did take my mom at one point once Drew Carey took over. And before he, he let everything go, go gray and had the, you know, goatee and, and really leaned out, we kind of looked like e- each other. And she, she made the joke to the producers as you go through. Uh, they ask you for something interesting and kind of funny. Uh, and my mom made a joke about how I kind of look like him. I'm guaranteeing that's why I was nowhere near uh, the front row uh, when things got <laughs> flowing <laughs> back in the corner top yeah. top shelf back this guy in the can, corner yeah this guy cannot appear on camera so as to not cause <laughs> any duress for anybody associated with the show uh we're watching some college football tonight a big college football weekend obviously week two of the nfl underway a lot of great storylines that will thread through over the course of the night we'll have visits from jason cole our buddy uh we'll see how silly we can get and obviously get some real nfl business done with him as well uh todd Furman will join us in our final hour of the bet the board podcast setting up a lot of your odds and and some of the information and, and angles you might be looking to play uh as the weekend gets rolling right now we got central florida uh down seven to louisville as we go to the fourth quarter there so a lot of fireworks and entertainment because but because i'm a dope dan i'm watching maryland and illinois and I'm also, a, you know, a company loyalist, as it is on FS1. Uh, Maryland with a 3 nothing lead. Younger brother of Tonga Vailoa against the Illini. My Midwestern loyalty show. And I, I think it, it one of those things that plays as we go through, and, and we love college football and the breadth and scope of everything. We talk about the regionalization of the game all the time, right? And trying to wrap your arms around all these different conferences and except when there's controversy or things like the Alliance uh, start to come out there or the SEC grabbing a couple of teams uh, to, to augment what they've got going on. You know, we all kind of drift back into our favorite teams and, and conferences. And for me, it's always Midwestern football and always the, the Big Ten is going to get the first glance from me. I think you uh, being the Wisconsin native, I, I would say that's probably the same. Yes. Yeah. For I've you, got this. Right? I've got this barn burner on as well. Three, no, the three yeah. nothing game in the middle of the second quarter. Yeah, yes. no, it's 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 an absolute thriller. Illinois, a seven and a half point dog at home. One and two. One of the great stat lines that popped up right uh, as you, you get the the inbox kind of uh, information and especially once you start going to closed captioning as you're on air uh you're you're trying to get all the attention uh and and make sense of all the the sentences and and petros is an eclectic guy our buddy petros papadakis on the call uh with alex faust for this one but illinois has yet to score a point uh in the first quarter of any of their three games so that bodes well for them uh but we're watching it because why we love our college football and and you and i in in getting ready for the show one of the things that that does come up and a team that once upon a time was one of those glory teams was Nebraska. And I mentioned the SEC expansion. You had Oklahoma. Well, you got a clash this weekend. And once upon a time, this would gravitate, you know, and start to elevate just naturally to the forefront of our conversations of the college football weekend Mm -hmm. to come. It takes nothing away from Alabama, Florida, mind you. Uh, But it would still be in maybe not the same breath, but it would be the next paragraph. Whereas right now, given especially where Nebraska is, it becomes a another game and and the reason I framed it that way is we're watching Maryland Illinois so your eyes gravitate to that uh, because of your your upbringing and everything so trying to reach back and grab some of these old rivalries these old games that had huge meaning like you know I look at Notre Dame's schedule all right how many big 10 teams are they going to face in a given year you know, the USC game, you know, where does that fall on the schedule? Mm-hmm. All of those, like, you, you, those are the things that stand out. But some of these other ones, classic matchups or things you wish were still in existence kind of go out of sight, out of mind. Yeah, and, and obviously now you can just turn on any – find any network and there's going to be a game on you can stream games you can find them on on a variety of different channels but if you want to watch a college football game you may have to work a little for it but it's going to be on and it wasn't like that 30 years ago it wasn't like that 20 years ago 
And so on as as we get ready for this weekend and you have Nebraska taking on Oklahoma, the 50th anniversary of the game of the century. By the way, it wasn't the only game of the century, but it is the game of the century that I think we refer to the most. So like there were there were a couple of LSU Alabama matchups, Ohio State Michigan game that I was at in 2006. That was considered a game of the 21st century at that time. But when we do think of games of the century, the one that and the, the first and foremost, I do think is Nebraska against Oklahoma. But now, Mike, heading into this weekend, obviously, you know, we've talked about Nebraska and their problems and, and the difficulty of them not being a national power anymore for the, for the Cornhuskers. This is not the marquee game of the week. It's Alabama, Florida, but more than likely. And there are some other good games. Auburn's at Penn State. Uh, you got an Arizona State BYU game that could be interesting. But I think Alabama, Florida is probably number one. And we th- expect Oklahoma to n- maybe run over Nebraska, beat them by 30 points, and we're going to move on. But it, but it made me uh, also think of, Mike, as you're talking about like regionalizations, if when we didn't have all the access, there were still other games that rose above. And you mentioned Notre Dame, and you know remember some good Notre Dame classics. But I even remember, I even remember mid to late 90s, and how big of a game Florida Tennessee was. Because sure. this is Peyton Manning prime time. This is Steve Spurrier in his prime. And how Florida and Tennessee, for as much as LSU and Alabama would try to grab the, the, the night game that CBS gets once a year, the 8 o'clock Eastern time Saturday night showdown, that was Florida and Tennessee for many years during that time. And it's, it's funny because at, growing up and I was in college at that time, that was, that was one of the matchups that you would talk about prominently in college football. As we sit here today, people would probably laugh if they, you know, guys who are in college right now to think that Florida, Tennessee was the must watch game in college football. But for a time it was, and it just, things change. And I long for those matchups. So I am interested in seeing Nebraska and Oklahoma, not only for game of the century wise, even though it wasn't alive, it's just big eight showdowns, big 12 showdowns and what those, those programs had. So there will be an interest there. It just, it's not carrying as much weight because of where Nebraska is in the college football world today. Yeah, I got one other, and and I mean, we'll see it later on in the, in the in the year, but certainly not holding the same weight. And I reference, of course, Florida, Florida State, right, where you've got mm. uh, Norvell, you got the guy that proposed to his girlfriend and got mocked across the way, uh, and and I suggested it, and now it's it's starting to go mainstream uh, of the uh, Beyond Me, and I, I've started that groundswell, you know, like you you slam your your staff into the ground, and then there's that earthquake effect, like I'm a superhero, uh, but the you know, as much as you don't want the guys necessarily to go back home, the idea that, all right, just let Deion Sanders take over the program and do what he's going to do with it. Yeah. I mean, heck, Florida State, Miami. I remember how great right. that was for, Absolutely. For, for so many years, even even before that. And that was a that was a must watch game. I went to a Florida State, Miami, covered it about 15 years ago as well. And and it didn't have the same juice. I mean, with those two schools not liking each other, yeah, that was still there. But also, as you said, Florida, Florida State had hate for each other. Florida and Miami also didn't like each other. They they played somewhat. But, yeah, the Florida State Yeah, Florida series, was problematic, it, it would appear. I mean, yeah. you know, just you, you go through the annals of history. Let's go nobody, through. <laughs> yeah, nobody liked anybody. Florida State had a bunch, of the, you, you know, even just when they would – they didn't play Notre Dame on an annual basis, but they had bigger games with them. But the rivalries that you mentioned, yeah, the Gators – and, and Knowles was big, and and how many you know wide left and wide rights do you do you have for Florida State against Miami? That's that's what we like. What we miss is are are those matchups. Even you know even a UCLA USC matchup, which was great because UCLA is kind of turning it around this season. Maybe you're hoping that UCLA or USC can keep up their end of the bargain. Well, now they're with a new head coach. So the, so that kind of even has taken it off. It's just, it's so different. Nebraska, Oklahoma was such a big deal, even not that long ago, even, even Nebraska, Colorado, Mike, you know, for 20 years ago was a big game that they would, that, that they would play. And obviously both schools have, have left the big eight and the big, big 12 conference, but that was even a big game 20 years ago. We just don't, I don't think, you know, we don't, we don't have those. We don't like feel those games, except LSU, Alabama, and, and, uh, you know, maybe maybe an, another one that I'm even just having a difficult well, time. I, Ohio State, Michigan probably doesn't even have it because of Michigan's woes lately. Yeah, and, and maybe maybe this will be a different year. But I, I think your point about the 
uh, ubiquitous nature of television uh, at this point. And there's a lot of big words. I just earned $10 towards my, you know, next student loans when I go back for a PhD. Uh, but the idea that we, we have access to all these, so it wasn't an anticipatory, all right, on this day, we are going to get this big game in prime time. Mm-hmm. And we haven't seen these teams kind of like major league baseball and, and all of this, because we have these packages, right? The NFL uh, growing up, it was the stats and the box score. And, and occasionally, you know, they, for me, it was, they played the bears or they were the game after the bears, which meant they were playing either the 49ers or the Cowboys. Yeah. So, you know, you had those kind of yeah. things that were happening. Whereas now you, you can pick and choose and bounce between all the games. So maybe they don't get quite that same build up uh, and dare I say the specialness, uh, especially if that's even a word. Uh, that's a good question. It's so simple and it should be. Uh, but the idea that we're, we're playing for the playoffs versus what used to be prestigious bowl games or just beating the downstate rival. Or whatever yeah. And the there's, there's a lot. There's, it's just, it's different now. Now conferences has, have divisions. So you're not even, you may, not even face that top school in your conference. Like you look at, you know, what Alabama and Georgia could be if they played every year. Because, you know, you're looking at the SEC, Alabama LSU has become that matchup. I, I think I, I think it's the closest thing that we have to what we had 20 or 30 years ago. But now with LSU falling off a bit, it doesn't kind of have that same cachet. But there were I felt that there were other matchups. Even, you know, Texas, Oklahoma at the at the Cotton Bowl is always a must watch, so maybe you could put that in. But I'm not sure on how much that captivates the country or brings the country in, like we had some of those huge matchups again in the 1990s or the in the 1980s. The changing face of the collegiate game. Uh, we'll do our best to maybe we'll build out a website and just really promote the hell out of it in uh, a WWE inspired. Uh, Rants. Well, if Notre Raven. Dame has another game of the century for them and they put it on Peacock, we are we we've got a problem. That would that would be <laughs> that would be a big big problem. Be sure to catch live editions of the Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon weekdays at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on Fox Sports Radio and the iHeartRadio app. Hey, it's Jason Smith. Slowing down, losing energy and drive. If you're finding it harder to perform at your best as you age, I'm here to tell you about M-Drive, the daily supplement for driven men who refuse to let aging slow them down. Packed with clinically tested ingredients, M-Drive supports your body's healthy testosterone levels while helping you get energized, lean, and strong. It helps give you the energy you need to get more done in your day, no matter your age. Visit mdriveformen.com and get 20% off your first order with promo code SMITH. That's my last name, SMITH. They have free shipping and a 60-day money back guarantee so you have nothing to lose fight back against the clock regain your edge with m drive give your body the healthy t support it needs to perform at its best all day every day go to mdriveformen.com and try it for yourself take 20 percent off with promo code smith that's mdriveformen.com promo code smith don't let age beat you visit mdriveformen.com this episode is brought to you by fanduel football is back and the best bet you can make is downloading the FanDuel Sportsbook app. It doesn't matter if you're new to gambling or an old pro, FanDuel has something for everyone. And as an official sports betting partner of the NFL, you know your bets are safe. There's also never been a better time to use FanDuel because right now you'll get up to $1,000 back if your first bet doesn't win. You can even turn a small wager into a big payday with a same game parlay bet. Just sign up with the promo code SPOTIFY to place your first bet risk-free on FanDuel Sportsbook. Download FanDuel today. 21 plus and present in Virginia. First online real money wager only. Refund issued as non-withdrawable site credit that expires in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> And now a speech. I just want to say that friendship is about heart. Heart and brain. Who's with me? Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. And my brain is saying, when it's time to go home, somebody call me a ride. Love that guy. Me too. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. We'd be remiss, Dan, if we didn't point out a big story Close to home, uh, $1.8 billion 
is the reported price tag. And on Friday morning, Steve Ballmer, the Los Angeles Clippers, and a very weird ceremony, uh, they announced the Intuit Dome. In other words, uh, get into it uh, because we need to make back that $1.8 billion. Uh, not opening till 2024, but we have the announcement, a big groundbreaking ceremony. I don't know how much you saw of the video, Dan. Uh, it really uh, left me a little confused and, well, kind of sad for them all. <laughs> well, this is this is what happens when you have a – a, a rally for a building, not not even really for a team. It's just for actual steel and concrete. And you do it on a Friday morning at like 10 o'clock. Like that, that's what it ended up being for the Clippers. I'm, I love having another dome, and I know it's not like the domes that we're so used to of the Superdome, of, of the Hoosier Dome, of the Metrodome. It's not like those domes, but I'm just glad that we get a dome again and not a, a field house or an arena. It's a, it's a dome again. But, I you know, this has always been talked about. Even when Steve Ballmer bought the team, it was kind of – there was so much throwing out there. There's talked about maybe changing the, the nickname of it. And for those that don't know, they are just the L.A. Clippers – that's they're not they're not the Los Angeles Clippers, which doesn't make any sense when they wear a jersey that says Los Angeles across the front. But everything that they put in their releases is L.A., L.A., L.A. They've tried to form their identity in a Lakers, Lakers, Lakers town, Mike. This is another step towards it. It's such a long play. Like I'm talking like a 50 years play, but this is this is a big step for a franchise and Laker fans will poo-poo it and say, "Ah, whatever." But this isn't this isn't for 2024, 2025. This is for the the real the real parting of the ways for the Clippers to try to show that they're the new franchise. That well, and I think that's the biggest thing for Steve Ballmer from day 1 uh when he bid the 2 billion dollars and everybody scratched their head saying this is too much for a franchise and like, "Okay, it's a franchise in LA how often do franchises in general come up for sale it's been a little more mm-hmm. I think the last decade than than we would normally see but but people cashing out because suddenly it was a couple hundred million dollar difference than it was five years before when you start looking at the television contracts and the globalization of the game and and on and, and upwards with all the different streaming options and merchandising rights and everything else uh, as you see the market just overseas really uh, become so immense I see it all the time with trading cards and it's that, you know, trying to figure out uh, in your shipping, how, how do you properly charge and make sure that you can track things heading to China and Japan and Australia? I mean, that that's you're not just going down the road and, and domestically with any of this stuff anymore. And that's part of the thing with the Clippers was recognizing, all right, Steve Ballmer wanted in. So maybe you overpaid at the not at the time. But sure enough, everything caught up really quickly. And as always, Dan, he is about as animated as it gets, except during that one performance. He was as bored and confused <laughs> as all the players as sitting Kawhi there Leonard looking. Was and, yes. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's the Kawhi Leonard face most of the time anyway. But now you put it in a circumstance that's supposed to be so celebratory. Like, wow, did they pay you extra for showing up today? Or was this part of the contract? Uh, but for Steve Ballmer, uh, he talked about it, you know, make it a palazzo and, and all of that. But as you mentioned, you, you mentioned the Lakers. That's a big part of this. We wanted Absolutely. to build a home that – is of our own, that sets a standard for us. We don't play anybody's shadow. We want to redefine how sports is watched, how we listen to music, how we cheer for our favorite performers. Developers, developers, developers. Lots of them involved in in the production here. And one of the things he really went on in his speech, Dan, was how as he traveled to watch games, He paid attention to all the details, right? The devil in the details to make this facility that much more interactive, immersive, and as a community pulling folks together. So what does that mean? Well, he left no stone unturned and he went right to the heart of the matter. I'm not ashamed to admit, actually, I've become a a real obsessive 
about toilets. <laughs> toilets, toilets, toilets. What do they look like? How do they get deployed? The architects keep getting on me. You're supposed to call them fixtures uh, instead of toilets, but it's the same thing. Now, if you go in the upper ball in Utah, I know what you guys think. I think Utah's pretty noisy, and we had a chance to play there. So I kind of like Utah, but if you go in their upper bowl, they have a ratio where you get 79 people per bathroom fixture. Pretty good, pretty efficient. In our place, we're only gonna have 27 people per fixture. Much more efficient. Big deal? Well, it is a big deal with the games tied in the fourth quarter. There's no question about that. Nature calls, we need you back in. Trust me on that. How do you like that? That is, that is, that is where you're going straight to it. You've got to get out of your seat, and you got you can't be standing in line, right? Because the other thing is, if you're standing in line for the bathroom, you're also not back in your seat buying the next round of beers, sodas, or popcorn. It's a smart throughput, uh, no pun intended, uh, situation that Steve Ballmer is developing for you. This is, the, this is the next wave instead of PSLs, PTLs. Personal toilet licenses <laughs> at arenas. You can have your own John if you pay, you know, X amount, 20 grand, and that John is yours. You have your own key code. You can type it in. That's where it needs to go. I I, I, I do. The, the, the problem is, is everybody just goes at the same time. Like, that's that's always been the problem, right, is you just so – when if, – if you can just – Figure out a way to to maneuver it and be like, all right, I'm not going to go th- at uh, right at halftime and maybe I'll go early, you know, fourth quarter or end of the first quarter. You try to, you know, space it out. But I think that's the real dilemma. It's a nice selling point, but maybe he needs to go to the step further and and uh, lease toilets to to fans and you can even make more money off that. Yeah, it's a, it, it's just the uh, here. This is how my attention to detail is. I care about your potty time. <laughs> The, uh, I, and, you know, technology is going to be great there, Dan. And obviously in Inglewood, uh, I went to SoFi to watch the Bears Rams uh, to start my week. And a palace it is. It needs splashes of color. It's a bit staid for me other than the, you know, roll away banners and stuff. Uh, <laughs> the Jumbotron's amazing. Right. But yeah. you know, like, like a c- concrete and steel. It's great. But I, I need a splash of color. We're in L.A. It needs to it needs to pop. It needs to have that extra pizzazz. And, and no doubt Steve Ballmer will be there. And, and that uh, creepy ass mascot <laughs> will be there it, it, right you, with him. You know, and, and seriously, the the it was it wasn't the main thing about the Lakers game, but it was a real thing that Lakers games are the place to be. Right, like, sure. like Lakers games are the place to be, and and I was not I was not in L.A. at the time when the Clippers played in the sports arena, but I have never heard one good story about that time. So I am going to take uh, the the word of all of those who attended games or covered games from that arena and just say it was not good. And then you go into an arena, a shared arena, Mike, when you're the Clippers, and you see the jerseys hanging up in the rafters sure. so much so that the Clippers had to cover it and then the Clippers were mocked for doing so well how would you like it you know the seats in that arena were purple because two-thirds of the team playing in you know in that arena had purple colors guess who didn't have purple uniforms it was the Clippers and so you know they have always been that way of of, of being less than and it's starting to change and it's not an overnight thing and it's not a five-year thing and it's not a 10-year thing but I've talked to people in LA with young kids and they say we go to the parks guess who's sponsoring the basketball courts it's the Clippers mm-hmm. guess who now is making the playoffs more frequently and being an active in free agency it's the Clippers they're never going to overtake the Lakers it's not going to happen just like the Mets are never going to overtake the Yankees but there is a spot that you can be and this is another step for the Clippers to do that and you know what that as you mentioned the area that they're in is is blowing up with the stadium it's close to the airport there there it could be the place to be uh, 20 years from now, who knows? But the Clippers at least are doing what they need to do to be successful in their city. That's why they wouldn't leave and you know to go anywhere else when he bought the team. Right, create your own identity. Right, they didn't go back to Seattle. They didn't go back down to San Diego. I mean, they stayed, and, and they are the tenant. And at some point, you don't want to be the tenant. You want your own piece. If 
if if only for the economic part of it all. I mean, just look at the difference in season tickets and what you can get if you are a Ram season ticket holder and the extra stuff, concerts and first avails and whatever versus the Chargers. It's not to do anything uh, to say anything negative about the Chargers, but there's a certain part that helps to a- add to your coffers uh, if you are the land owner. Be sure to catch live editions of the Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon weekdays at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. He's Mike Harmon. I'm Dan Byard. We have a brand new fantasy football podcast called I Want Your Flex. Twice a week, every Tuesday and Friday, we come up with new episodes to not only look back at what happened, what you need to do at that minute, and also look ahead of what's coming up in the fantasy football world. That's right, Dan. Every week, we're going to scour the waiver wire to find the pickups to turbo boost your fantasy lineup. Sit, starts, fantasy football players' rankings to get you ready to dominate the competition. Listen to I Want Your Flex with Mike Harmon and me, Dan Beyer, on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, and wherever you get your podcasts you know the final score now listen to the nfl podcast that tells you why it happened dan orlovsky scott pioli and me bob washusen we're tape heads going inside the coaching tape and giving fans the answers i always say this bob don't talk to me about quarterbacks and say that you can make all the throws make the right one at the right time that's something that he does really well regardless of what the hierarchy is Folks in the personnel department, including the general manager, need to be servants to the head coach. Well, here's the question I want to ask. Why do you all lie to us and tell us that these rookies aren't going to play? Do they have a skill or trait that is going to allow them to survive? Bob's going to bring me back to my good years at the Jets. Yeah. Were there some? Heck yeah. Come on. AFC championship. I also believe this closes the gap between them and, you know, those other top tier teams in the AFC, Cleveland, Kansas City, and Buffalo. Listen to Tapeheads on the iHeartRadio app, on Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. Hi, everyone. Al Roker here. As a guy with his own catchphrase, I appreciate that Smokey's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But I'm filling in because there's a lot more to report. Like when there are parched or windy conditions out there, you got to be extra careful with things like burning yard waste. After all, wildfires can start anywhere, even in your neck of the woods. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Hey, everybody. It's time for today's STEM tip. Want to know how to make your selfies even better? Okay, let's use science. The best time for photos is golden hour. That's the moment right before the sun sets, when the atmosphere scatters blue and violet wavelengths, making perfect, soft, and golden selfie light to show off that beautiful face of yours. Click. Check out She Can STEM for more inspiration. A message from the Ad Council. When Dan Byer joins us here uh, in the evening, uh, it's a great pleasure. We have a great back and forth. Dan and I go back a long way here on Fox Sports Radio. But he also brings a gift to the team. And, and Dan, I think it's time for you to unveil that that gift to us all. Yeah, and it's the gift of bringing the Fox family together as we play the feud. Top nine answers on the board. Mike Harmon, Steve DeSager, Alex Teichert, and Nick Vitalia are our Fox family tonight. I called Nick Bataglia for 10 years, so I'm turning over a new leaf. Let's do this. Top nine answers on the board, guys. And FIFA officials now touring sites for the 2026 World Cup to see what cities are going to host those in the U.S. Canada and Mexico has already kind of been decided. What I want to know, guys, the nine American cities that hosted World Cup matches in 1994. Right. I know Steve DeSager is salivating, yep. but we aren't going to start with Steve. We're going to start with Mike Harmon. There are three strikes and a pass available. A pass reveals an answer, but it cannot be used by anyone else during the game. Mike, you are up first. All right. Uh, I'm just going to take Los Angeles and move on. Okay. That <laughs> is a smart move. Show me, L.A., yeah, nice. I was at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena. We're talking metro areas. That works for me. L.A. is off the board. Over to Nick. I'm going to go Dallas. Dallas. Oh, Metroplex. Show me, Big D. Yeah, there Woo. you go. Show me Dallas, Alex. That's what I need to see. Dallas <laughs> is what I need to see. Two for two. All right, Big A, you are up. American cities that hosted World Cup matches in 1994. Oh, man. Dan, that's just tough, bro. 
There's a lot of places out there city-wise. Uh, has anybody said Chicago yet? They Bears. did now. Show me Chicago. Let's go. They All right. The there it is. The Windy yeah. City. Did they? Yeah. Well, yes, they did. All right, Steve. You I need you in this room right now. Uh, Steve DeSager, you are up. East Rutherford, New Jersey. Ooh, Steve goes specific. Wow. <laughs> Show me East Rutherford. <laughs> Steve, New what York was the City. attendance? Yeah. <laughs> for all games combined. Please. Uh, four for four, <laughs> once through, back around to Mike Harmon, looking for the five remaining American cities that hosted World Cup matches in 1994. I've been listening a lot to the uh, Book of Mormon soundtrack, so I'm going to say Orlando. Oh. I love you. Show me Orlando. Ah, uh, yes. The great state of Florida is on the board. Orlando is off. Number, uh, I put it on number six on my list, but there's no order with this. Back around to Nick. Let's what do stay, you got? Let's stay in the Sunshine State. Let's go Miami. Oh, Miami. What a beautiful city. Part. Is it Miami? <laughs> no. Oh. Over to Steve DeSager. Um, well, I know there was a Bay Area, whether it's the 49ers or Stanford. It was, can I just say Bay Area? You got Rose Bowl out of L.A. Yes, you can. Okay. Show me the Bay Area. Let's go. Stanford Stadium okay. was the official site of those matches. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Did I skip Big A? I well, think you say I the did. best Big for last, a. Dan. That's okay. All right, Big uh, A. If I remember correctly, because I remember waking up to watch all this stuff as a kid, it was either, I'm going to say Washington. Okay. D.C. D.C.? Show me DC. Let's go. All right, there it is. Over to Mike Harmon. Uh, English roots, Boston. <laughs> was it over in Boston? Show me Boston. Ah, uh, there it was. All right, Nick, for all the marbles. Our final city was actually in Foxborough, but you get the point. <laughs> uh, uh, it was, it was Detroit. That's who it was. Oh, well, there we go. Be sure to catch live editions of the Jason Smith Show with Mike Harmon weekdays at 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific on Fox Sports Radio and the iHeartRadio app. One of the big stories out of the NFL, and we've seen a lot of people chime in, former teammates, pundits, and, and, and a lot made about one game, perhaps more so than any other, and that was the drubbing that Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers took in week one, an absolute uh, demolition effort uh, at the hands of Jameis Winston. We talked about him a little bit in, in the pyramid, uh, 55 of his of his passing yards, which was a smallish yardage total, uh, came on one play, five touchdown passes. Look, you take what the defense affords you, you make plays, succeed, and proceed. But a big blowout win for the Saints. So all of a sudden the eyebrows are raised of, well, what are the Saints? I, I don't know about you, but I had the defense rated probably t- bottom bottom part of the top ten. Uh, with some potential to get better, right? You got a member of your front seven on suspension for six weeks. So uh, eventually uh, he comes back and and they can be even more formidable up front. But what you saw with Green Bay was a lot of timing issues. And then you you start thinking about the offseason. Matt LaFleur, even on Friday in his press availability, saying, oh, I'm tired of talking about it. It's like, well, no, this is the situation that you all brought to bear. You don't get to decide when people are done talking about it. If you go out and absolutely demolish the Lions on Monday Night Football, it may quell it for a moment, but beating Dan Campbell, Jared Goff, and that squad isn't going to really you know, wave off a 35-point burial to a team that you should be competing with in the NFC if we're going to look big picture as opposed to the Detroit Lions where the best thing you can say about the matchup is familiarity. And even then, it's a new coaching staff. So it's, <laughs> yeah. you know, it's a first experience for all of them, except for having maybe played against Aaron Rodgers at some point. So, you know, LaFleur trying to push it away. Rodgers, I saw another commercial that just came out. It was great. He was like a, the aloof rock star because he has that gray beard going mm-hmm. and, and all of that stuff. He, I think he borrowed uh, wardrobe from Lenny Kravitz. Uh, not quite Hunger Games, Lenny Kravitz, but, you know, rock star Lenny Kravitz yeah. uh, as you go through. Uh, but for the Packers... You know, I, I don't – we're not going to really learn anything from week two, but color me interested to see how this plays and whether there truly is a division in the locker room. Because I asked Jay Glazer when he joined us the other day, Dan, and I don't think I've ever had Jay take as long a pause before he started to answer a question. And he just said, you know what, that, that, that's a good question. I, I, I don't know right now. 
right, as to how the he came back. But do you have some portion of the locker rooms like if you don't want to be here, don't be here, man. There's everything that Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers received this week. This is not meant to be malicious and mean, but all of the criticisms, all of the questions being brought up were legitimate. They were absolutely legitimate, and they should be brought up. They should be brought up in a situation when you play a game like that and considering how everything played out in the preseason and how everything played out in the offseason, it's legitimate that they should be brought up, Mike. The question now is, and the thing that drives me a little crazy is, are you are you counting Aaron Rodgers and the Packers out, or are you all in? And I just don't think it's that simple. To right. the point of Jay Glazer, and to your question of saying that, there's a lot more at play. It was one of the things that that I had heard when Brett Favre would do his retirement thing. And again, I know it always comes back to what Brett Favre did when Aaron Rodgers was there. But one of the reasons that made the transition easier, in addition to Rodgers uh, or Favre actually having a retirement ceremony where they did think he was retired, was that Rodgers got along with all the guys because everybody there was kind of the same age. Everybody there was friends with everybody. And now at Green Bay, you wonder on how many of those guys are boys with Aaron Rodgers. I'm not saying that it is a criticism. I'm just saying it as a fact. I mean, they're, in our workplace, I love the people that we work with. But there were people that I knew 10 years ago a lot better than the, you know, the guys that I know that just came in three weeks ago. Sure. You know, so like there's 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 always that aspect of it. And I think it's a I think it's a fair question to ask. But to your point is we're not going to get an answer in week two. And just because you say that it's a problem with what Green Bay had in week one doesn't mean that you're counting Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers out. They threw a stinker up in Tampa Bay last year. Tampa Bay had their own stinkers on their way to a Super Bowl. So things can turn around. But everything that was given to Green Bay this past week was fair considering how everything uh, evolved since that NFC Championship game that they lost to Tampa. Yeah, it, it's just one of those situations, right, as it went on. And, and you know, t- don't take a lot of victory laps because I get a, as much wrong as I do right. Uh, and, and perhaps, uh, you know, against the spread in my one nine hundred lose my A's uh, challenge currently uh, sitting at 7 and 10. I ain't feeling too great about it uh, at the moment, uh, which means a lot of miles and, and a lot of uh, walking ahead for my feet. Got to get comfortable shoes like Cliff Clavin told us at the end of Cheers. Uh, but it's it's the sequencing of him coming back here, and, and I thought that would happen. But but yeah, the relationships are, ne- are going to need mending, right? They're all professionals, they all have egos, and they know they're better shot to win, to grab any playoff bonuses, to put stuff on tape uh, that might net them a bigger payday, whether in Green Bay or elsewhere, right? Playoff games and being part of a playoff offensive and defensive line. Uh, you're kidding yourself if you don't think that helps at the negotiating table. But, you know, with Bakhtiari uh, not available, you know, the offensive line takes a hit. The wide receivers beyond Devontae Adams, they're good, but they're only made great. Are they? Well, no, 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 but I mean, that's what I mean. Good good is a very wide berth, right? Sure. Right? Adequate? Like, I, I didn't want to downgrade him to, you know, Jags just quite so soon. But the, but the point is, normally it's Rodgers is going to elevate them. That's the history. And if he doesn't, and he has a game like that, then, you know, or multiple games like that, then suddenly those guys are not creating separation on their own, I guess is the point. They're good enough when he's on his game but they're not going to be able to make the big plays on their own, right? Robert Tunyon, not to be confused with Tanyan. Uh, it rhymes with Funyon, uh, as we've been told. You know, he was a red zone guy. Beyond that, really not a factor between the 20s. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's a position that, as we've seen develop through the years, you know, he, he's good for, for part of, uh, of you know what you need in terms of the whole pie chart uh, at that position. You go a- and to the point as you ask, are they? Yeah, the receivers they're interchangeable. They're they're just guys. But it's it's Aaron Rodgers being on his game and having that timing and being away as long as he was. Who got the timing? Who got the reps? Jordan Love and maybe during that time they decided he is not the guy and not the solution to anything going forward and, may, and maybe that's the case but in the interim that's all reps that the secondary guys didn't get I would, with Aaron Rodgers I would be willing to bet 
And I would be bet that would willing to bet a lot that week one is the worst game that Aaron Rodgers will play this season. I, I, I don't I don't think that you're going to see a zero touchdown, two interception for 148 yard performance again from Aaron Rodgers this season. I think that is going to be rock bottom. I don't know, Mike, if there's going to be a 180 yard, one touchdown, two interception game. I don't know that. I, I, I don't know that. It is not going to get 133 yards. I even gave him a few extra yards. I think I gave him Jameis Winston's yardage accidentally. The point being, though, is I don't think it's going to get any worse. It's just the question of are there going to be times where, or is it always going to be a better? than that and I think that is part of the question I don't think that and I don't think honestly Mike that they're the guys that are fully invested Super Bowl or bust on the Packers team have too much of a problem with Aaron Rodgers or any problem with Aaron Rodgers it's just more of just being chemistry and, and age difference and in that sort of thing and can you get on the same page and those are the things that you just wonder which actually makes you know what what Tom Brady and the Buccaneers were able to do uh, last year a little bit be able to appreciate that a little bit more but then you realize well Brady brought in guys that were familiar with him so yeah there's the, the jury is still out I just don't think that it's going to be as bad I I, I I feel very confident saying that Aaron Rodgers put his worst game of the season last Sunday it's just the question of are there going to be other stinkers along the way yeah to your point about the the age difference and and relatability in the locker room I mean one thing we'd always heard about Brady even the buttoned up Brady in New England right now he's just being himself right he's Mm -hmm. got that lease on life whether you like it or not whether you're really tired of him now that not only does he win but he also has a personality that if you're being honest he's pretty funny and he's pretty yep. snarky, and he's the kind of that, – that's the kind of stuff's like, yeah, that's what we all do, particularly if you work in our business. And I think a lot of folks are, are really having uh, to come to grips with that. But he was always the guy that went into the locker room and introduced himself to the new guys. Hi, I'm Tom. Like, mm-hmm. they didn't know who you were, right? Like, like they, they didn't, you know, have your poster on the wall or trading cards sitting around uh, in their homes. No, uh, they've been watching you forever. But still, it's that, hey, you're the new guy. And I, you're new to me, so welcome in. I don't, I don't know I, I, how Aaron Rodgers works in a locker room the well, same way. Something well, tells me it's not quite the same welcoming. Well, hey, you're you're one of the 53 here. Well, I, 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 I mean, I think that his cachet and who he is, and I, I think that that carries a lot. I, I do, and I think that other players understand that. What I do wonder, though, Mike is even if none of this happened in the offseason, and we're talking about on-field stuff, Mm -hmm. there was going to be a regression from his MVP season. Well, there had to be. I mean, look at the prior two years. He he threw 51 passes or 51 touchdown passes over two years, and then he throws 48 last year. Yeah, statistically, it had to. So, and that's if everything went right. So mm-hmm. that what what kind of leaves everything open is okay. Everything didn't go right in the offseason. There's actually one of the reasons why I, I I said that Green Bay should have traded him is because there was no point that his value would have been higher for a guy that's going to be 38 years old. Like there's there was no way that that value was going to be higher coming off of an MVP season. That was it was the time where you could get the most for him. Green Bay said, all right, we, we're still in the Super Bowl push. Let's go with it. And that's where they are now. But there was always going to be a regression off of last season. Uh-oh, Brad's buzzed. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he's starting with the woots. <laughs> <laughs> Good thing is, he knows when he's buzzed. Know your buzzed warning signs? Call for a ride when it's time to go home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message from NHTSA and the Ad Council. Honorary Forest Ranger Betty White here, lending a hand to my dear friend Smokey Bear. Because for years, he's only said, Only you can prevent wildfires. But there's a lot more to say. Like if you park your car on tall, dry grass, the hot exhaust pipe can start a wildfire. So keep the animals safe, especially the cute shirtless one. Go to SmokeyBear.com to learn more about wildfire prevention. Brought to you by the U.S. Forest Service, your state forester, and the Ad Council. Here's today's STEM tip. Don't throw out that old plastic bottle. Repurpose it by turning it into an awesome terrarium. Just fill it with sand, pebbles, soil, and your favorite plant. It'll grow sealed right in its own ecosystem. Learn more at SheCanSTEM. A message from the Ad Council.